Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your JavaScript tutorial series. This video, we're going to go hands-on with dates. Now, I would encourage you to check out the previous video because that was like the foundational video for dates. It was actually quite a bit of fun, so I'd encourage you to check it out. And you know what else you gotta check out? That's right, our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain offers classes in JavaScript-based web development as well as iOS and more. Classes are online and in person. Let them know I sent you their way. They'll give you $250 off. This is a great way to jumpstart your career if you're looking to get a job in the industry or just learn a lot of material in the next however many weeks. I believe 13 weeks. So check out the link in the description and go enjoy yourself with that. <laughs> what? Anyways, this video, we're going to be talking about how to use dates in JavaScript. So in the previous video, I created a date. I used var, but in this case, I'm going to use let because we're in a block scope here. So we can give it a name and then just say new date. Again, this is the date constructor. So this is going to give us a new date object. We do a refresh. Oh, I got to print it out here. So we can do console.log, print my date, do a refresh. And you can see this is what the date looks like. So it has the day of the week, month, day, year, hour, minutes, and then seconds. So every time you refresh, that seconds is going to go up. So it's constantly changing. When you just call the default constructor here with no no uh, arguments passed in, it's just going to give us the current date. So if you don't want that default behavior, then you need to pass in some arguments. So you can pass in the year and the month. Those are the only two that are required. The rest are optional, but you can pass in more information if you'd like. Now there is one gotcha, as I mentioned in the previous video, that the, the month is actually zero based. So 11 is December. So if I save this and do a refresh, you're gonna find that it says December 1st. Um, so not November, the 11 is December. So if you want January, you need to use a zero. If you want February, you wanna use a one and so forth. Now there is one extra thing that I didn't mention in the previous video that you definitely need to know about. The, the date constructor is very interesting in that if you give an invalid value, it kind of converts it to a valid value. So if I put a 12 in here, for example, it's actually going to be January of 2021. So basically we start with 2020, then we add 13 months, which would make it January of 2021. So hopefully that makes sense. It basically just rounds around in a circle and we'll keep doing that. So this is January, this is February, and so forth. So I could put in some huge number in here and it's just going to add that many months and convert that to what year it would be. So we can do a refresh and you can see this would in fact be uh, March of 3141. So if you guys are watching it this year, um, that year, then well, this is uh, pretty interesting. So let me know how the future is. <laughs> so yeah, that's how date, date objects work. Um, you can also pass in a number of milliseconds. So if you just pass in one argument, it's interpreted as the number of milliseconds. So put it in like that. Now it might be hard for you guys to translate milliseconds to an actual date. So let's just go through some samples. If we put zero in here, we actually get 1969. Now you actually have 1970. January 1st, but because we're in central time zone, which is GMT minus six, we're actually getting 18 hours on 1969. But basically the date object, it starts at 1970, January 1st, which is known as the Unix epoch. So any milliseconds we add to this is going to go from that date forward. So if I put a thousand in here, that should be one second. So this should be zero one here. And indeed it is. So that's how that works. Now, if you want to pass in the number of milliseconds for right now, you can do that by doing date.now. That's going to return the number of milliseconds from 1970 to right now, and that's going to give us the same exact value as just doing the default new date. So if we wanted to do that, we could, we could console log my date as so, and then we could also just console log a new date like so. And you can see we get exactly the same values. So either one will work and you'll probably see a little bit of both. Now, usually when you're doing date.now, you're not going to be passing that into a new date. You're actually going to be using it to keep track of a number of milliseconds. So for example, we could create a new variable. Let's bring this one back to the default so we just have a normal date there. And then we could say, let 
I don't know, time equal date dot now. And this is going to give us just a huge number of milliseconds. And we can print that in the console log like so. And you see that's the number of milliseconds from the Unix epoch. So this is known as a Unix timestamp. And this particular version does use milliseconds. Some will only use seconds, but in JavaScript, it does take milliseconds. So these first three digits here are going to update very quickly because these are the number of milliseconds. All right, cool. So what else? You can use milliseconds to basically keep track of how long something took. So a common thing you will see is you'll get the date dot now before something happened and then after something happens and then you'll basically subtract the end from the beginning to see how long it took. So if we wanted to do something like that, we could say let start equal date dot now and then we can say let end equal date dot now. Now these are going to be basically the same thing at this point, but if we do something that takes a bit of time in between here, we could see how this might work. So let's create a for loop. We could say, hmm, we'll let i equal zero, i being less than some really big number, i plus plus. And let's just, uh, let's just do a huge sum here. So let's create a variable x. We'll set that equal to zero, and then we'll say x equals x plus i. So let's see what happens here. And at the end, we're gonna console log x. Uh, save that and then refresh. So we get this really big number here <laughs> and um, that's the sum. Now, if we wanna get how long it took, what we would do is do end minus start and assign that to a total. So we could say let total equal end minus start and then we can console log the total. Like so. Do a refresh and you can see it took six. And you can see as I add zeros here, this number is going to become much bigger. In this case, I think I made it a little bit too big. <laughs> Whoops. We'll bring that down to zero or two. Open that in a new tab there. And you can see it took 227. Let me add one more zero. Do a refresh. And now it took about 1295 milliseconds. So if I add another zero, it should take about 10 times that. So let me see. Awesome, and the number seems about right. Now I'm pretty sure this is the same number I had to start with. So if I was just a little bit more patient, it probably would have showed up, but you know, I had to spend 20 seconds to save me 10 seconds. Now we don't really need X in this case. I was just printing that for fun and just to see how the number got larger as we increased I. The next thing I wanted to talk about is that you can actually add and subtract dates. So let's get rid of all of this and go through another cool example. Let's create an application that will tell us the number of days between two dates. So we can make a before date and we can just pass some number in here. We'll just go with that there. And then we could say after and say new date. And let's just make it maybe five days in the future. So the answer should be five. Now what we can do is we can actually say after minus before. And let's console log this and see, let's first assign it to a variable. So let's say let days equal after minus before. And we're not quite done. This isn't going to give us what we want, but this is a good start. So we'll just console log days and see what we get. So we get this huge number, which isn't quite what we're looking for. This is actually the number of milliseconds between the two dates, and that's not what we want. So we actually have to take this and convert it from milliseconds to days. And how do we do that? Well, we actually divide by however many milliseconds there are in a day. You could look that up or you could calculate it yourself. We could say one day is equal to a thousand milliseconds for every second. There's 60 seconds in a minute and there's 60 minutes in an hour and there's 24 hours in a day. Then all you have to do is take this whole thing and divide it by one day and that should give you the answer like so. Now the answer should actually be correct and we get five. Awesome, so that's just a little bit more practice with dates. You can do a lot of cool things with these and you're probably gonna run into them a lot with JavaScript. So make sure you pay attention now that the video is over. <laughs> and hopefully this was helpful and I'll be sure to go over some more stuff in the next video where I think we're going to be going over some pretty useful date functions. So I'll see you then. Guess you could say it's a date. <laughs>